What is up folks, Justin Phillip here, back again from Dog Times Productions. And today we are gonna be looking at a little device that PortKeys sent me uh, because they saw my last video of the review of their little BM5 monitor. They took my notes into consideration. They, you know, I expressed my concerns about the BM5 not having an HDMI out. So they sent me a little device that could help us with that problem. And as you can see here, it is working quite nicely. So we're gonna take a look at that little device that they sent me, but also, after that, we are gonna take a look at what exactly we are able to monitor and record out of the Pocket 4K in regards to different higher frame rates. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, with the Pocket 4K, you can go up to 120 frames per second in overcrank mode, uh, such as in 2.6K, right? Um, or 80 frames per second in 2.8K anamorphic, right? So we have different options, different flavors, and I haven't really messed around with it too much because I primarily shoot narrative work, and I don't really tend to use a whole lot of uh, high frame rates, uh, overcrank modes in uh, narrative work as much, but I would still like to check it out and see what we're able to send out not only to the Porkies but also over to our Action Cine I on the iPad because this is what our uh, clients are watching, this is what our directors are watching, and if they're not able to watch what we're actually capturing, then that kind of defeats the purpose of having this whole crazy rig, right? So first, let's check out the little device that PortKey sent me. And it's pretty simple. It's just this little HDMI splitter. They sell it for about 16 bucks uh, over on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down in the description below for any of you guys to check out for yourselves. But what I think is pretty cool about this little device is that it doesn't require power to split the HDMI signal. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you know I use the Lampart V-mount base plate. It has lots of plugs and inputs and ports, which makes it nice. It also has an HDMI splitter. However, the HDMI splitter that's on this Lampart V-mount base plate does require power. It has an on-off switch, so that's kind of a bummer because that means that's just one other thing drawing power off of my brick, right? So this little port case thing is pretty cool, just knowing that it doesn't draw any power. The downside with the PortKeys HDMI splitter is that there's not really an easy way to attach it to the actual BM5 monitor itself. That's kind of a bummer for me because um, I just couldn't figure out a way to attach it directly to the monitor. I even went so far as detaching the little Bluetooth module which is kind of a bummer, you wouldn't really want to do that, kind of defeats the purpose of having this monitor. But however, I did, only to realize that the port keys HDMI splitter is not tall enough to reach each uh, bolt uh, input, um, what do they call that, like bolt hole? <laughs> Either way, the HDMI splitter is too short and doesn't fit on the back. Uh, the, 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 the bolt holes don't line up. Now, I did a little bit more research on port keys over on their Amazon page, and they do make a little uh, device specifically made for the BM5. It's like a little NATO rail with a little rosette that uh, attaches directly to this bad boy. And you could essentially then use uh, that to attach your HDMI splitter, and it could ride right here on the side of the BM5. But that's kind of a bummer too, because then you're not really able to use the NATO rail or the rosette handle. And that's pretty much why you spent $40 on that little thing, right? So the HDMI splitter is clearly an afterthought uh, for this, but either way, it's cool that they make it. And if you have a cage for your camera, which I think most people do nowadays, you can just simply attach it to that. And that's what I've done here with my rig. I have the small rig half cage, and I just attached the little HDMI splitter directly onto the half cage. And it just worked out nice that it sits it's right next to all the other ports and plugs on the Pocket 4K. So that's nice. The only thing is, is that it sticks out a little far with this particular cage, and it was kind of interfering with my follow focus. But with this Foca DP3000, I was able to just swap out the focus, uh, the gear wheel and swap it to the other side. So then we could get a little bit more room between the follow focus and the HDMI splitter. But either way, yeah, it's pretty simple how it works. The middle one there is your input. So that's the HDMI cable coming out of the Pocket 4K. And then at the top, you have you have top and bottom are each an out signal. So the top one here is running to my Action Cine I and the bottom one is running directly to the port keys BM5 monitor. And as you can see here, we have a signal on both. So that's pretty nice. And I just happen to have three little baby HDMI cables. So that's kind of nice. I I mean, it's still a little crazy looking, but it could be a lot worse if you had long ass HDMI cables, right? Okay, so 
let's um, take a peek here at what we are looking at. So this is just some coats hanging up over here, uh, nothing special, but I just primarily wanted to look at what we're able to monitor on both the Axon Cine Eye signal and the BM5 and what happens when you hit record. Because I have seen in the past with certain uh, Panasonic cameras that I've owned, such as the GX8, that's a cool camera, but as soon as you hit record, it killed the signal out to your external monitor. And that's always been kind of interesting to me. So I just want to see if that happens with the Blackmagic 4K. It hasn't so far in the little tests I've been doing, um, but I thought this would be fun because I didn't really um, do this in the original Portkey's BM5 review video that I did of this thing. So we can check that out as well. So right now we are in the highest resolution that the Pocket 4K offers, which is 4K DCI, right? And we are shooting at a true 23.98 frames per second. Now we can go into high frame rate mode, otherwise uh, known as overcrank, right? So we can hit the HFR button and now we are in overcrank mode of 60 over 23.98 and we still have our signal to both the port keys and the, uh, and the Axion Cine Eye. Let's hit record. We're gonna record a little bit here and overcrank mode and we're good, right? Okay, so that's cool. So we can do overcrank, that's nice. Uh, but let's say let's say we were doing broadcast for sports or something, uh, and that needs to be recorded in true uh, 60 frames per second, right? Um, so let's do that. Let's jump up to 60 frames per second, and there we are. 60 frames per second, no longer overcrank mode. This is true 4K DCI, 60 frames per second. And as you'll see here, we lost our signal to the port case BM5, but we still have it on our iPad thanks to our Axune Cine Eye. So the Axune Cine Eye is able to send out that true 60 frames per second signal, but the Porky's BM5 not so much. But now keep in mind that the Blackmagic Pocket 4K does automatically down convert that 4K DCI signal to 1080p, right? It cannot send a 4K signal. So it's only sending a 1080p 60 frames per second signal out. So the Axune Cine Eye has no problem with that. However, your BM5, it cannot handle any frame rates above 30 frames per second. So that's kind of a bummer uh, for all of my kind of broadcast guys, right? That have to shoot above 30 frames per second. But however, if you wanted to stay in overcrank mode, you know, if you didn't need to do broadcast and you were just doing 23.98 frames per second and you just needed overcrank mode of 60 frames, then that's no problem. As you see there, my BM5 is back on. We're now in overcrank mode and we're good to go. Um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. We didn't really go over that in the original review of the Port Keys BM5. But now let's mess around a little more. Let's turn off the HFR mode and um, let's see how we do with the 2.6K at 120 frames per second over crank. So now we're in 2.6K. Um, I'm still at 23.98 frames per second. I'm going to turn on the HFR mode. And here we are at 60 over crank. So we're good with that. And let's bump this up to as high as it'll go at 120. Now we're at 120 frames per second uh, over crank. Uh, and we have signal to our port keys and our axion. Let's hit record. And there we go. And now we're recording on both. So there you go. So your client will be able to monitor if you're recording an overcrank. So that's cool. And even if you have to record in true 60 frames per second, your client can still watch on the low budget video village option that we have put together with the Axion Cine Eye and the iPad. If you haven't seen my video on this, I put a video out months ago on how to make a little iPad rig uh, that can attach to tripod or anywhere. I also have an accessory on the back here where you can add handles and a neck strap to make more like a true director's model. Monitor, you know, so if you haven't seen that video or if you want to check out the parts on how to build it uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description below so you can check that out um, So yeah, so we know we're good on all of these uh, higher frame rates with the Axon Cine Eye That's pretty impressive. We're able to send that 60 frames per second true signal out with the port keys Not so much. So you'd probably just have to leave this bad boy at home that day So that'll do it for today folks uh, for my patreon people over there get ready We're taking a break from the feature film for a while because Monday we are gonna be looking at a corporate shoot that we recently did I was using the black magic 4k as the a cam and the gh5 as the B cam So we're gonna be taking a look at how you can match those cameras on the day while shooting, but also we are going to jump into DaVinci so we can look at how to match them in the color grade as well. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, so if you're over at Patreon, be on the lookout for that. And if you haven't checked out the Patreon yet, maybe uh, hop on over and give us a give us a gander. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash Justin Phillip. There goes the policia. We are in Los Angeles, folks. It is wild and crazy. It's thirsty Thursday. Someone's on the run. Get them, boys. Get them. Okay, uh... <laughs>
What else can I say? Um, we'll just let them drive by real quick. I really hope it's not me this time. Is it you? Is it, was it you? Was it me? Was it... I don't know who stole the Frito-Lays from Ralph's. I don't know. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, so be on the lookout for that if you're over there at Patreon. And what else? What else? There's something else I want to tell you guys. I guess that's it. You know, there's swag from Design by Humans. That's uh, that's an option if you guys uh, want to check out that stuff. Uh, what else? What else? Um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. I just wanted to share that. Poor Key sent that to me. Uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description below so you guys can check it out. I think it's cool. An HDMI splitter that doesn't draw power. Pretty cool. Pretty cool option. Okay, as for now, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, for now... Keep your pants on, that's a wrap!